The Tony Award winning Broadway musical. Anybody in hell or? So, based on the 1982 American comedy film Tootsie, this 2019 adaptation received 11 Drama Desk Award nominations, 10 Outer Critics Circle Award nominations, and 11 Tony Award nominations, garnering nine wins among all the categories, including the Drama, Circle, Drama Critics Circle Award for Best Musical. And of course, like I said, we're going to have two performances throughout the event here. But uh, pl everyone, please help me welcome to the stage the cast and creatives from Tootsie the Musical. Yeah. Everybody, thank you for coming. How are you enjoying Google so far? Love it. We love that cafeteria. Oh, those pickles. <laughs> so many Pickle good pickles. Bars. Pickle bar. Pho. Pho? Pho. Oh. What? No, it's pho. It's pho. Pho. I had the Jewish version, pho. <laughs> Um, well, everybody, let's go down the line here and introduce yourselves. Um, there's a lot of talking over each other that these do, these people do that I've learned. So, um, Santino, let's start with you. Santino, oh, sorry, Santino, uh, I play Michael Dorsey. I'm Lily Cooper, and I play Julie Nichols. Sarah Stiles, Sandy Lester. Andy Grote Lucian, Jeff Slater. Scott Ellis, the director. Robert Horn, the book writer. David Yazbek, music and lyrics. Scott was directing the sound check and the rehearsal, so I, uh -huh. I can now say I've been directed by a Broadway director. Um, and I also want to say that every single person on the stage, myself excluded, has a Tony nomination for this show. And, and just two of us have two actual of, Tony awards. <laughs> <laughs> two of them the rest of us are losers. Yeah, the rest of us These are losers. These two actually no. won. <laughs> uh, so we'll do all the talking. All right. <laughs> Probably will. All, all right. Uh, was award season nuts? I mean, with all of you getting the nominations, did you did the show suffer at all, or or was it all like just kind of another day at the office? I don't think the show suffers, but we it is it does add a whole another aspect of kind of a, another job to your life because it's a lot of interviews and luncheons and <laughs> <laughs> photo shoots and stuff like that. So on top of doing eight shows a week, it can be pretty tricky. I've never seen anyone by the end of that look as tired as Santino <laughs> did. I mean, I remember going up to you like toward the end yeah. and just going, dude. You got up at like 5 a.m. that day, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And oh, just yeah. saying yeah. until yeah. midnight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is tiring, but it's also great because it's some, you know, we love what we do and uh, to be able to be recognized and uh, it's a great, it's an honor. So as tiring as it is, which it is, and we'd all be lying if we said it wasn't, um, it's also great. And we all really like each other, which is, makes it even better. Oh yeah, Sarah was telling me that it, the tradition, even since the first preview, everyone comes down to your dressing room. Yeah. Yeah, it's lonely up there, you know? I mean, no, it is. Are you on I the mean, top? No, no, no. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, once the show starts, I don't really get to see anybody uh, in a social way. <laughs> uh, and, in, and in the, it, anyway, that's the nature of the beast, and mm -hmm. that's the nature of the show, uh, 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 the way that my character plays out. So I love having everybody in my dressing room before the show, because I get to kind of see everybody, and how is everyone doing? And then, you know, I got to go put the corset on, and it starts. So. Well, uh, so how did everybody get uh, attached to the show? We'll start uh, with Andy there. Um, I got attached to this show because of the director, Scott Ellis. Um, we both <laughs> did shows at The Roundabout. Um, and then, I don't know, you saw me in a workshop and then said, come on over and read this thing and see if it fits. And then it was a, it was a good fit. It was funny stuff that was written. <laughs> um, and I said it in a funny way and then... <laughs> wow, you're the glamour of theater, the way you just described it. It's a lush life. <laughs> um, I was the same. I was doing a reading of a different show with Scott, and then he said, I think you should come and do this thing with me this fall. And I thought, all right, yeah, that'll happen. But he did call, and I did do it, and I, Santino and Andy and John, actually, Reg and Julie, they were all a part of it at that point. Was that the first time that Julie and Reg were in it? I think that so, yeah. Julie, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. So that but those also those early reads were amazing in, in these early workshops yeah. that we did um, because people would come in and like Sarah, like I, I remember the first time that I heard the song and you're like, oh, great. She's going to do it <laughs> um, because no one else should, you know. Thanks, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> I actually auditioned for the show, so I yes, I did. earned my role. You, did. you were also in a Broadway um, show at the time, which is why you couldn't have been in those. Okay, readings. thank you. That's I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was sort of a later addition. I joined for the Chicago production that we did out of town last summer. Um, yeah, and I auditioned, and I booked the job in the room, is what I hear. You were right. the final puzzle piece. That's right. I fit right in. You did. <laughs> Well, in the back, creatives, I'm, I'm curious, too. Uh, uh, I, I, Santino got involved. We had, Santino had asked me to go and do a show up at uh, uh, New York Stage and Film, which is a place that you can go and work shop some stuff, and he had a show. He was working on and asked me to do it with him. We hadn't worked together, and um, so we had a great two weeks working on this, and when I got offered this or to take a look at this, my decision was, yes, I'll do it, but I, I knew at that point I wanted Santino to do it. Um, so that's... You're very sweet. Well, you didn't thank me at the Tony Award. You didn't let anybody know. You can't thank losers. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> so, uh, that's the final thing. How, uh, that, and I, these two can talk because I was the third person involved in this group. They, they had been working together, and then I was the third one that came in with them. So, But they have a history with this. Robert, did you have the idea for the script? Or, or where, did, where did it come from? Especially now, being, the, of course, you know this question was coming, being in the middle of the Me Too movement and, and what's going on now, why, why this script? Why now? Uh, pay, uh, they paid me. <laughs> That's true. No, uh, they, they, uh, I had uh, the producers uh, uh, Scott Sanders and Carol Feinerman had. Got, David was already attached. They had the project had been around for about ten years. They had had the rights to it and had kept trying to figure out how to do it. And we're having a hard time figuring out how to do it. And I had uh, done a, a reading of another musical that the producers came and saw and went to David and said, uh, I think that we might have found somebody that has the right feel and tone for it. And they came to me and I, I flew into New York and I met with David and I, th I was like, I left that meeting going, well, uh, that sucked, <laughs> I blew that. And then um, like a, a day later, they called and said, David would love to work with you. And so um, I said, who? <laughs> and, he, uh, and and then David really David and I had our first meeting and th in that meeting we really talked about what we knew we didn't want to do and then started talking about the things that we knew we wanted to make it into but in terms of the Me Too movie era of it all that was happening as we were writing it and really was coming into the forefront of social consciousness as we were writing it and it really we were right every day we'd be like there's a new headline we have to address this and we have to figure out how to do it but also make sure 10 years from now it's still relevant um so that that was that those were the challenges with it but um bottom line paycheck <laughs> <laughs> that's the why yes. <laughs> yeah david what what attracted you to it um i said no to it five or six times before i said yes um, really yeah it was brought to me feels like 38 years ago, 39 years ago. I mean, it, before the movie. It was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, before the movie was even considered. Um, I, I, I never thought the movie was the greatest comedy ever. I thought it was a, an, certainly an iconic mm -hmm. title with some great performances, but I always felt there's stuff I, d I really didn't like about it. And um, it wasn't until I started realizing after really a year of saying no, <laughs> that maybe there was a way to do it, a new way to do it, mm -hmm. something really fresh and something that kind of fit the zeitgeist and, uh, and would last for 10 years. And then, uh, you know, struggled with it for a little while. And then when uh, Robert came along, it, felt to, it, it came together very quickly. Just that first conversation that we had about what not we didn't want to do, mm -hmm. and that what characters maybe that we could consolidate or cut, um, and then also just the the tenor of the of the comedy, because that's the reason we hit it off so well. We're, we're, I thought his his writing was just the best comedy writing I've seen for stage, 
Um, and he's just, put his, he's just put his microphone, so I have two mics to keep praising him. I praised him so much that, that he, went, he won a Tony, and I didn't. Uh, and, and, and the interesting thing, we were working on it for a while, and then um, Scott came on and then everything else changed. Scott, who I, I thanked when, when I won my Tony. They, they, they <laughs> uh, I did, thank I you. Did. Uh, and then every, we, we had gone down the road and written a draft and then Scott came on and everything changed from there. Well, that, yeah, that, that happens when you have a really good director and, and the, you know, Scott coming in with like a, a cast, you know, like half a cast in mind all of whom ended up being perfect. I mean, that alone, you know, changes everything for the better. And then, you know, then he just does all this heavy lifting for many, many, many months, while Robert and I just, well, we did some heavy lifting too. But um, it's all the know. truth is creating a show. It's all collaboration. Yeah, it's everybody. That's what it is. Yep. And and actors are probably. Actors, I always said this before, they're the last ones that are brought in, and ultimately they're the most important uh, group that comes in. <laughs> yeah, I can't agree ones. with that, but okay. Uh, I, believe, <laughs> I believe that. And then you start collaborating with the actors who then help you shape and tell you what's working, what's not working. And uh, so, it, it, you know, it's always a collaboration. And if you're lucky to be in a really good collaboration, then it's, it's, it's also joyful. Which is, should be the, the, for the actors. Did did uh, did all of you? Were, I guess you were all familiar with the movie. Did you see the movie ahead of time and base your characters off of that, or did you just like screw it? I'm doing my own thing. I had seen the movie. Scott called me three years ago and said, "I have a script. Will you read it?" And uh, all I knew, all I remembered, I must have seen it as a kid with my family. But I remember it being a great part. That's all I really remembered. And then when, from watching the movie, I remembered she's southern. There's a red dress. And the central conflict is that he falls in love when he's pretending to be someone he's not. And that was it. And then I never went back to the movie again. I have the screenplay, mm -hmm. which was very helpful, uh, but I didn't go back to the film. Because what we're doing is completely different. It's a completely different script. So, yeah. Yeah, I watched the movie when I was a kid, and then I rewatched it right as I was auditioning. Um, random story, I, I was doing SpongeBob when I was auditioning, and Jessica Lange was sitting in the fifth row of SpongeBob? My, of SpongeBob, the day I had my final callback. Did I tell you that? Yeah. So, uh, so I felt like I was like, that's a sign. Um, <laughs> but no, I, ne I never thought I could ever be any type of Jessica Lang. And so I, I think the fact that I was even being seen in, in the room was, I knew that they were open to something new. Um, and I think we needed something new. Uh, Julie, is a definitely updated version of, of the movies, Julie. And so I think it's very different. And, and we all have collaborated uh, to work on that. And Robert and I, you know, talked specifically about the changes that we wanted in Julie. And, and we created a new fierce Julie. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, do you remember when we were doing the, the, all that press in Chicago? Andy and I were doing it together, and we we kept going to all the different. What do you call that when it's the junket? The junket, junket. yeah. And and every single person would go. So you're playing the Terry Gar and the Bill Murray part. <laughs> yeah. How are you gonna do that? Like it was so so scary. But I remember talking to you about him being like, I wasn't freaked out until everyone <laughs> told me I should be freaked out by it because they were so brilliant in the movie. But we've also done different stuff with it too. Yeah, and also nobody wants to watch us try us try to do <laughs> impressions of those yeah. performances. Like it just doesn't make any sense. So I mean, uh, again, we have great writing, um, and the characters are different than they are in the film. Um, so you know, it's there's lots of space to make it your own. That's interesting, Santino. Was was there any fear on your part, being that this is a musical of having to sing as? traditional men, male register and traditional female register in your falsetto? Yeah. There's always fear. There's always fear. In any project? That's going to be the title of my biography. Always fear. Uh, the, um, always afraid. No, I think it's, you know, we were figuring out in the, um, listen, it's also a great opportunity. That it, It's a terrifying thing that really hadn't, uh, my voice teacher, uh, who I've studied with since I was, I moved to the city, she and I both were like, how are we gonna 
what's the safe, what's the safest, healthiest way to do this, and how what can we get away with, and also just honor the story, tell the story in the best way we possibly can, uh, and what an opportunity to get to try to do that. I've never thought I would, you know, there was a casting director from LA who came a couple weeks ago to the show <laughs> and uh, came to backstage and asked me if they found me at a female impersonator bar. <laughs> 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 like, so you'd been singing as a woman for a long time. I was like, oh no, 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 <laughs> but thank you. Um, uh, no, it's a great, you know, it, actors, we have our voices, we have our bodies, we have our emotional life. Uh, and uh, that's how what we have to tell a story. And in this situation, I get to really stretch all of that as much as possible. So um, yeah, there was fear, but it also was a great uh, opportunity to get to you know dive into something that I've never been asked to do, mm -hmm. and I couldn't find anyone else who had been asked. You know, there was no one to call to right. be like, so when you did, what did you do? <laughs> there's no one. There's no one. So um, yeah, that was yeah, that's it. Well, this is a good transition sort of, uh, to get into what else is uh, terrifying. Sarah Styles, your patter song would terrify the shit out of me, um, which uh, you're about to perform, but I want to get into, uh, David, and talk to you, you about this. Like, you, you've done other shows with other patter songs and whatnot. Like, what is it about that type of genre of song that, that you're attracted to? Well, I've always loved, um, ever since I've heard uh, uh, I am the very model of a modern major general when I was in school. Mm -hmm. I sang it, actually, uh, and just love the percussive quality of it and the, uh, the cleverness of, of the lyrics. Um, and, you know, obviously there have been dozens and dozens and dozens of, of great ones. They're really fun to write, but especially fun in the case of Sarah's song, which is called What's Gonna Happen, where she's um, where the character is uh, has this uh, um, the night her, her her the nightmare of her reality in auditioning comes out in this kind of flow of words um, and it's a self fulfilling prophecy as you'll see but there's something about that uh, stream of consciousness that's really fun to write once you know what the what the rhythm is and to some extent what the music or the melody will sound like, you can, in my case, I like to pace around and just start babbling, you know, to myself, which is what I do all day anyway, and <laughs> but do it faster, and then just start seeing where the rhymes are, where the images are, where the, where the, uh, uh, where the ideas are. This song, <laughs> I was just telling Sarah, I actually, they asked me to sing this song on a radio show fairly recently, <laughs> and I almost had a stroke and a heart attack, and <laughs> at the same time, like it, it, it was so, it was so impossible. <laughs> By the end, I, I, my throat was closing, and I was seeing like spots. And so when you, when you hear her do it, just know that it's physically impossible to do. And she does it, <laughs> she does it eight times a week. You know. This week, nine. Nine <laughs> times this week. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, I think this is a Yeah, good. we got to do it now. Let's play it. I'll start it from the chair. <laughs> oh, look at All that. Right, here oh, we that's go. good. I like Go that. ahead. Improv. <laughs> I know what's gonna happen. I'll try to go to bed with fear of failure flapping like a fruit bat in my head. I'll sleep for half an hour. The clock will ring at six. I'll wake up in the shower with a stomach full of bricks. So I won't have any breakfast. Maybe just a little tea. Like when you have to go and get a colonoscopy, which incidentally isn't half as disconcerting or upsetting as going for a part. You know there's no way that you're getting. But anyway, I'm heading downtown for the audition where everything I'm dreading will be coming to fruition. And here's what's gonna happen. I'll walk in weak with hunger and there's a dozen girls who look like me but 10 years younger I'll go into the bathroom and I'll try to vocalize and I'll be singing manga 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 but I'll be hearing Sandy sucks she really sucks she really 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 blows and she's old and she's lame and then someone calls my name and here's what happens I'll walk into the room the gross fluorescent lighting is inviting as a tomb and everybody smiles they'll say it's good to see ya but all I'll see is judges and they'll all look like Scalia and then a little banter as they look me up and down and somewhere through the fog of insecurity and hate I'll try to convince you 
due to a lifetime of waiting tables and debilitating self-loathing. <laughs> but wait, now someone's asking, so can we hear your voice? I make a lame attempt at humor, do I have a choice? I nod at the pianist, he's always wearing black. He's always in a turtleneck with dandruff on his back. No sooner do I get my note and open up my trap, than inevitably some mealy mouth assistant director's thumbs all over his iPhone, and I know he's probably tweeting, hello, wow, this girl is crap. She's a fake, she's a phony, she could never win a Tony. And now I'm in a place I know quite well. I've left the world and I've entered hell. I'm this far away from a fainting spell, but just before I die, I finish a song which I oversell. Somebody says thanks and wishes me well. The next thing I know, I'm at Taco Bell, stuffing my face with meat. I'm trying to take it slowly. I'm trying to be my best. I'm trying to be more holy, less bitter and depressed. Oh, I'm reading Eckhart Tolle. He makes a lot of sense. I bought a Buddhist bowl. He says it helps you be less tense. It doesn't do a thing for me. I sit there on the floor and watch a vivid sequence of humiliating incidents from my past go by and think what kind of masochist is coming back for more when she knows what's gonna happen because it never does and happen because it always, 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 no. I know what's gonna happen. Don't tell me that I don't. And don't say that I'll rise to the occasion because I won't. And don't say I've got talent. And don't say I've got heart. And don't say that I'm clever because I know I'm pretty smart. I'm smart enough to know that I'm too stupid to admit you can't survive a diet that consists of eating shit. The trick is knowing when it's time to pack your bags and say that's it. You know what's gonna happen. I know what's gonna happen. <laughs> Here's what's gonna happen. I quit. I quit. I quit. <laughs> Thank you. Robert was mouthing the words the whole time. Was I? Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> I was trying not to. I, <laughs> you're biting my tongue. You're, you're I was keeping doing it with the finger, yeah. yeah. Yeah, gosh. Uh, she does these little things too that are just, that like I haven't seen. So, so you know, <laughs> hysterically funny. Am I gonna like, get notes after? <laughs> the only note will be a big exclamation point. Yeah. Wow, wow. Yeah, that is impressive and doing that a million times a week. Do you, have you ever forgotten words? I, I don't want to dwell on this too oh, long, but. One, yes, one time. No, you said the wrong word, but you what never. What did I say? Some, it I wasn't can never a real remember word. Because it wasn't it a word. Happened, yeah. And then it, yeah, it just was like a And yeah. when that, if I, yeah, if I don't, if the diction doesn't happen, I think it happened during the Tony stuff because we were all just so tired. Yeah. And Andy and Santino, when that's happened, it's happened a couple of times, their faces. <laughs> The fear it's worth it. in their faces. <laughs> Usually, we laugh at each other when we do things wrong, but they're like, oh, no, girl. If she gets off, we can't save her. We can't help. <laughs> we can't help at all. Oh, all right, well, moving on from that. Uh, you you know, but but as I was mouthing oh. the words when she says the line, I'm in the bathroom, and I start to uh, sing, and I, I kind of change it to Bing, just for this room, but... Robert's been waiting to oh say God. that joke <laughs> for like 45 minutes. Oh God. That was not the right context. <laughs> Where are you going to do it? I, mean, I love that you didn't give him notes. <laughs> you know, you could do a my world. joke, but that's not that's the correct. <laughs> Can you revoke a Tony Award for, uh, for best writing? <laughs> well, he didn't write his own jokes here. Um, okay, okay, okay. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Notes, notes, notes. Here we go. Chicago, you guys mentioned the, the Chicago Editone tryout. Um, beta. What, what's that? <laughs> now that's how you do a Bing joke. Yeah. <laughs> you so said Bing. Yes. It's like beta testing. Yeah, you're beta testing the show <laughs> in Chicago. Chicago. Yes. Before your, your production release here in New York, were the, the, uh, the user experiences of each deployment different? That's right. Yeah? Yes. I mean, how did it change from one location to another? Oh, well, the show was, is, was I'd say, what, 30% probably, maybe a little less than that? Uh, 30, you know, really? Yeah, yeah, I would say there were changes, you know, definitely, well, there obviously were changes yeah. uh, from Chicago to here, and learning what the audience there, uh, how they reacted, how they responded. Also, the Chicago audience is different than a New York audience. Uh, the theater was different. The, I mean, I know that sounds silly, but actually makes a very big difference. The theater that we're in now, uh, is the walls are carpeted, which is great for acoustics, but not great for laughs to continue to reverberate, which in Chicago, it was as if we were in a roller rink or something. Like it was very, very, very live. 
uh, which I don't think the audience would notice. We noticed, or I definitely noticed. Uh, and that changes everything. It changes you know, timing, it changes the feel of certain moments. So um, that in addition to just the show changing and previews as well. You know, once we, we, started in, uh, we started performances in March, we'd had a, about a month worth of uh, trying different things every night, different pages, different, you know, everything was changing. So uh, Chicago was our beginning and kind of like the, the, the majority of the stuff stuck to what we held on to and then, uh, and then it continued, the changes continued. Right, there, right. There are only two. There are two reasons. Uh, only two ways to open a show. Either cold in New York, so you just start previews, put it up sta on stage in New York, and that's really tricky because you're going to make changes and you're starting to make changes during previews and that stuff. Or you go out of town, which adds a lot of more money to your budget, but it gives you uh, a, a point of breathing a little bit, seeing what's going to work in front of an audience because the audience will start telling you, and then, uh, and then you have the luxury to come in, as we did, and say, okay, now here's our list of things that we're gonna change or make better. Uh, Broadway, uh, what did we call it? The, 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 I don't know, something with Broadway. <laughs> that we're coming to Broadway and we just wanted everything to be better, and so that gave us the opportunity to do that. Well, what's the, what are the specifics of the schedule? So you have your 8 p.m. show, all the actors go home, and then the three of you get together over drinks until four in the morning and start striking through script pages, or how does this work? Well, w there's also a fourth, because, well, there's five, because it's the musical director, Andrea and Dennis Jones, the choreographer. And I think out of town, what we would do is we would watch the show, and yes, then we would have a meeting afterwards. We were not staying up till four o'clock, unless they gave us free food, and then we would stay. For <laughs> they're not. So we would sit there for a while, a couple hours, and go through it, and then meet the next day, and sort of start getting our list of things that we were going to change and and hopefully make better. So then the actors come in for rehearsal in the we afternoon. New pages. Those With new are pages. New pa yes. So you're learning a new script that you're then putting in the show that night in yeah. front of how many yeah. thousands of people. Yeah. Sometimes the crazy thing will happen. We'll we'll get something new but we won't have teched it, so we'll rehearse it, but won't put it in the show that night, so we'll do our old version of our show that yeah. night, and then we tech it the next day, so we do the new version of the show the next night. It's yep. just crazy. And, and Robert, is he writes, he has so many jokes, so we would, there are places. None of them bing. <laughs> <laughs> there are places in the show where we would get new jokes every night, so if you were coming to previews, you were seeing new stuff, which was maddening, but also really awesome. That sounds like it would drive me up the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I guess in a good way, just keeping it all we would straight. All visit. There was one where John Bellman has the, had this one section that just kept changing, and we'd all just stop and like listen. We're like, oh, no, no, okay, that didn't work. Or, oh, that was better. <laughs> <laughs> and there were jokes that they would constantly try to get me to cut, and I wouldn't cut <laughs> until I finally the MNIL to wait. Can you give us an example of a not good? Oh, I can. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so my fi our family. I come from a very. No, no, let me, let me oh yeah, you better do it. Yeah. So there's a there's a there's a uh, Ron Carlisle is trying to seduce Julie Nichols. He's the, director. he's the director, and he's trying to make a case for why he is the way he is, and make excuses for his bad behavior and his personality. And he says, "You want me?" Uh, he yeah. says, "You have to understand." I grew up in a very formal household. At family parties, my parents would make us Robert for apples. That's why I think got it. That's it. why it was yeah. cut. And think that's about why it. Every <laughs> night, I would say, Robert, please cut the joke. We love that joke. No one's getting it. Or See, they would sit like, like just You'll get like it in you. like 30 seconds. <laughs> did you get, did, did did you get it? And a few of you did, might get it. No, and Andy liked the joke so much, he made us all tote bags that said Robert for apples. And we all <laughs> carry them all the time. See, because, see that's that right there. That was the reaction. But I love the magician <laughs> one. There are bobbing, a lot of good Bobbing ones. for apples. But, <laughs> oh, and that's no. what would happen. That the, you hear that, the you audience. that in the audience. Like, everyone's whispering and go, oh, yeah, that's good. All the other jokes are so clear. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> that one took a few moments. <laughs> well, uh, we've got two mics in the aisles. If any of you have questions for anybody up here, please start lining up here. Um, I want to get over real quick and talk about William Ivy Long. We have like one uh, question. I know. I'm, I'm oh. letting them have time. You're not directing. Uh, I'm directing. <laughs> Andrea, I, I, he, he said oh. I directed when I first came. Well, wait, wait, this was correct. <laughs> putting us back here. Like, What's that? This was the correct way to do this. I oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, the, the, far, the farthest part away. The <laughs> to be like, um, excuse me, Alan. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, William Ivy Long, this was his 74th 
74, 75th oh, no Broadway idea. credit, a right? A lot. He's like the a lot. dude. Yeah, it's. I think he, Beetlejuice and Tootsie <coughs> both on Broadway right now. He did both of them. I believe this was the his 74th Broadway credit. Dude won has won six Tonys, and he, costume designer for those who don't know. Um, I guess bringing this into the show into like a modern time, and you know the script and the music. It's modern music and whatnot. But in terms of like. Did any of you, uh, I guess, did you have the choice of working with, with William or was he already attached to this? The, uh, the director of any show picks the design team. So I, I brought in the design team, including William, who I'd worked with before. And uh, we knew right away because uh, Michael and Dorothy has to do a lot of changes. He's Michael at one moment. You know, a minute later, he has to be Dorothy. And William, on top of everything else that he's so brilliant at, he's brilliant at fast changes and, and finding a way to, to, to make magic in front of your own eyes, which we knew from the very beginning uh, we would have. And we took months and months. Santino would come down to William's uh, 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 studio. design and uh, yeah. studio and f start figuring out who Dorothy was. And it was really incredible to watch him, this brilliant designer, sort of with Santino's help, sort of figure out who Dorothy was. So yeah. he was always my first choice. And uh, I don't think anybody would ever say, oh, I don't want to work with William Ivy Long. I think, yeah, he used to yeah. work with Siegfried and Roy. Right. So he used to do all those magic tricks, like being able to do it right in front of your eyes. Um, yeah. He's the, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he, he did uh, Cinderella, too. He did Cinderella. So he also did my wife's wedding dress. So oh, really? Very sweet. Yeah, it was very bizarre. Did she have a amazing. quick change? <laughs> no. No, but he was very sweet to do that. He had, yes. I'm married. <laughs> I love him. He's, he's, he's very... I think that was a lost opportunity. <laughs> <I know. laughs> when we renew our vows in a few years, I'm sure I'll ask him and see it's what like, he does. I need to give my... Never mind. <laughs> We're in a corporation. Yes, hey for being here and kudos on the amazing performances and the creativity of this show. Um, my question, I have two questions, one for Santino and one for David. Um, Santino, I've been a fan of your work for a very long time and I was curious about submissions only. Sure. And how you came to be involved in that and any hopes for more episodes because I, I just loved the inside look at what auditioning and theater is like. Um, so would love to hear more on that. And then David, my question is, the music in the band's visit is so incredibly different from the music in this musical. And I'm curious about just your process when you're working on different types of uh, material. And you mentioned that you stand up and you babble, et cetera, but I'm, I'm interested in how you get into um, just composing the music. Should we answer it exactly the same time? Same thing? <laughs> <laughs> what, you, should I go first and we'll sure. circle back? Five, six, yeah. seven, eight. Um, uh, it's different all the time. Um, with the band's visit, I was kind of playing in a, a genre, you know, this classical Arabic music. Um, even when I was writing in a jazz idiom or in a more American contemporary idiom, that, that was always there. So I found myself <clears throat> Some of the uh, instrumentals, you know, I would write on uh, the the oud, you know, like the Arabic lute. Sometimes I would, um, uh, you know, use a, like a darbuka or some kind of Arabic uh, percussion instrument to get into the right sense. Um, so, th and and that show is a very poetic show in terms of lyrics. So there was a kind of a depth, there was a going inside and not really caring that much about what an audience would think, quote unquote, um, but more thinking about what, how musicians would feel when they were playing it or how performers would feel. With Tootsie, it's a comedy and the, the comedy and the characterizations come first. So uh, the music serves the comedy. So I, I, I really was thinking about how performers would uh, deliver comedy, where you get a chance to breathe, for instance, in, in the song you just heard, um, where a laugh might come, and how not to step on that laugh with more lyrics, you know, all those, all those kind of things. So you are thinking about an audience, because it's comedy. Um, but 
this, the, the genre of the music or the style or, or the beat or the rhythm has to serve the characterization and it has to serve the, the, the comedy. And uh, you know, when you have a book like Robert's you know, book, which is just so hysterically funny, you have to keep uh, elevating your game. And then when you have a cast in place and you realize, wait a minute, there's some amazing opportunities here, that's also very helpful to write to um, you know, someone, someone like Lily's voice or a the fact that you know, Andy Grotolution sort of created this really weird character. <laughs> and and you know, that kind of inspires a song like his, the song he gets at the beginning of the second act uh, and the dance that he does uh, <laughs> there, therein. <laughs> If, when you see the show, you'll understand why that's funny. <laughs> uh, Santino? Submissions Only was a web series, for those of you who don't know, it was a web series back bef when like web series were just beginning, before Apple and other places were making streaming things. Did Bing, and, by any chance, uh, have No, it? Bing had nothing to do with it. Bing was not involved. Um, but uh, Kate Weatherhead, who and Andrew Keenan Bolger created it uh, together, and they were, they're both actors, working actors, who I took an acting class with her. She called me. She had done a show with my wife uh, before we had even met and uh, had said, hey, I'm doing this thing. I, I think it's like a web, I'm, we're, we're doing this web series. Do you want to play this character? Uh, and it was just a bunch of actor friends who all got together with like a camera and made this thing which became very popular in certain circles. And it's, uh, I, I love that you asked that because she will, she, I, I, at Stage Door often, I will, people will talk to me about submissions only, or I'll get letters about submissions only more than almost anything else. And uh, it's great. And she did an amazing job. So It was so accurate and on yeah. <laughs> eerily so. Yeah, I loved being a part of it. I hope that there's, I know that there was a talk at one point of making it, turning it, uh, taking those characters and making a feature out of it. I don't know. It's a lot of work. And I remember Kate, uh, it's a lot of work. So, and she has her own stuff that she's doing as well. So, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, over here. Thank you so much for coming to Google. Uh, I saw the show. I thought it was super funny. Um, I saw an Instagram post um, that Santino made about this, like putting cups on your leg and like trying to make <laughs> it feel better. Um, I'm wondering if playing this role of a woman and having to be in heels uh, gives you this shared perspective with your female castmates and or whether it's like the role specifically that's so demanding that you have to do this rehab <laughs> in between uh, your shows. Uh, I would say, and I, everyone can speak to this as well, we all, there's physical therapist comes to, it's a pretty typical thing in a Broadway show, just the repetitious, uh, repetition of any behavior uh, over time will wreak havoc on your body. It's not meant to do, it's not natural, you know? so. What I have to do, what we all have to do, just in, both vocally but physically, to make sure that we stay healthy, uh, we have a physical therapist who comes into the theater twice a week uh, and works with everybody uh, on a, as we have, there's like a sign up. Um, I have a pretty intense, I have a, I go to a vocal massage lady who puts a glove on and goes inside my mouth and releases my jaw from inside. Wait, what? Um, yeah, yeah, I do. And it's amazing. That's I would a recommend it. Yeah. Well, she, um, she's all, yeah. I mean, it's actually, anyway, yes. <laughs> Do I think uh, in this particular gig where there is one scene at the, in the end of the second act, the two of them have a scene, which is the only time I'm really not um, doing something physical. Uh, so it's a, it's a lot. And uh, it's, it's um, but it's also, you know, you learn, how do I say that? You. You, you become, the way that like uh, uh, I imagine a carpenter knows how much force they use on a hammer with a nail and they know, they know that. I know in my body, both emotionally and physically, like what's going on, where am I at right now? I know I have a show tonight, I know I have a show tomorrow. How do I balance that? And then you reach out to a bunch of support people who are brilliant at what they do. In addition to the fact that women wear heels, I find insane. <laughs> I have so much empathy and sympathy, and also I think you should take them off. <laughs> I think it's insane. I don't like it. I also have to wear a corset uh, to turn my giant 
rib cage into a less giant rib cage, which most women do not do or don't have to do, and thank God they don't, uh, unless they want to, and then they should. Um, but, um, and you can do whatever you want. Um, uh, you know, my glimpse of pretending to be a woman gives me this much of an idea of the shit that women go through that men do not. Uh, and I think that is a great thing. It's been a great thing for my wife will tell you that's a great thing. Um, but I think it's also a great thing, um, you know, to remember that as an actor, we're stepping in other people's shoes all the time. And this is another example of there's still just a level of shit that women deal with that men don't. And that, you know? that sequin dress is often cutting your body apart. Oh, yeah, that's right. The Literally. sequins He's also cut my body. Bleeding. Yeah. <laughs> and my fingers will bleed. There was also a, an Instagram post where I'm crazy gluing my fingers <laughs> closed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I walked back into my dressing room one time at intermission. I had blood all over my face. I was like, who's blood? <laughs> <laughs> I think we're expanding the audience for Tootsie in a way that we didn't expect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the, uh, is, that, is that everything? Okay. Sorry. I'm yeah. sorry. Like, no. I disappointed no. you. I know. I feel bad. <laughs> yeah. Joel. Um, so I have a question uh, in terms of book writing and l lyric writing. Do you two basically do that in isolation, or is there like, will you give commentary, David, on the Robert's book, and Robert will you be like, oh, I have this, yeah, I like those lyrics, but here's something, I love the joke to be tweaked, or is that like a fine like church we, and state separation? We work, we work very, very closely together, and whenever possible in in the same vicinity. He lived in he lives in L.A. and I live in New York City, but. Um, you know, we really like being together. <laughs> so, uh, and that kind of joy sort of finds its way into the work that we're doing. So, you know, we've spoke for many months before we even really started writing, per se. We talked about the characters and, blah, 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 and we just were getting, getting going with that stuff and then spending a lot of time talking about structure, right, and stuff like that. Then you go off, you do your thing, come back together and you know I, I asked Robert for a lot of help with how a, what a song's purpose was or you know the best way to structure it and um, you know I'm I like to help write jokes you know so hey, I, David he's being humble but he also won an Emmy for writing on the David Letterman show well, so David knows <laughs> writing. so it's a little it's a little it's, you know, it's a very weird thing because when you're hired to work with somebody like David um, uh, who is pretty iconic at what he does and, and has, a, has this body of work that you, <laughs> um, you have to get over your sort of fangirling for a moment. You have to get over and say, I can't give notes to David Yasmin. I can't say, David, I don't know about that because it's David Yasmin. And then you get past that and you create a, a, a marriage. Um, uh, it actually becomes a three-way when the director comes in and, and then... And then it's, a, then it's an orgy and it's an, after that. I yet mean, still uh, expanding the audience. Um, but, but Scott would do something fantastic because he would come up and he'd go, you can do better. You can do better. And, and he didn't have any problem saying that. It's no, funny, he no, never no. said that to me, but OK. <laughs> Uh, but it re it is it's like Scott said it's really a collaborative art form you you just sort of have to be open to being bad and then counting on your on your collaborators to elevate your work and you got to be ready I mean you have to know how to accept it when someone says no that's not it's just not going to work I mean yeah. you know I I've got a trunk filled with songs from Tootsie that just didn't work you know and uh, and you have to be able to just say all right let's try again. And the actors do bring a lot to it. Once you cast it and you start re the rehearsal process, the actors will say, that just doesn't feel right me saying that. Or there are a number of jokes that the actors say, would it, fool around in rehearsal and say it. And I'm like, that's going in. That's staying. So it, it, it is that collaborative. I just want everybody to know, too, that um, David wrote the theme song to Where in the World is Carmen San Diego. I didn't know that. <laughs> you didn't really? Do it, I did not know that. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Sticky All right. fingered filter from Berlin down to Belize. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Lynn Thigpen. Love That's her. right. Yeah, she was great. Rockapella, man. Those guys. They're my uh, jam. Uh, but, uh, but. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, Scott. Who is um, my mind? He has a question. I was going to go and. Oh, toot, sorry. Toot sorry. Um, no, 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 no. I, no. 
I, I just see, pulled a Scott. I'm sorry. I should not have interrupted. <laughs> Trying to work with these people doing sound check was fun. Go <laughs> okay. Yes, go ahead. He, he's right, out. Uh, so my question for the cast is, um, you know, eight shows a week and you're now several months into your run, just like keeping things fresh and exciting and the energy up. And I don't know, is that something the creative team, do you like check in every now and then just to make sure things are running smoothly? Or do you guys, how do you keep it fresh, like eight shows a week this long? I think that the number one thing uh, that helps with that is just, it is, it is actually new every night because there's new sets of eyes. So, uh, and new sets of ears that are in that room who have never heard it. So uh, that also is a new partner for us every night when we listen to the people. Um, because that's the way that the, the comedy is gonna play is you actually have to play it through them and they do change every single night. We do a lot of pranks backstage. <laughs> you do. <laughs> we do. I wish. <laughs> I would say, you know, I'd love, I love, I think that's the, f that's the funnest part. It's the most fun part of being uh, an actor in theater is, is acknowledging and accepting that you cannot, you cannot replicate any single moment exactly. You just can't. It's impossible. And the second you take that off of your shoulders and you realize that you're stepping into uh, a story that an audience needs to hear and you have found a reason that you need to tell this story and uh, tell this character's, you know, step in for their soul. Uh, and then get to to play opposite people that are brilliant at what they do and to breathe in that moment and live in it and know that you're sharing something that's unique. That's a gift that I, I mean, you're, I'm constantly reminded of it. Um, and that's why we do what we, I mean, that's why I do what I do. I, I don't know how to. Yeah, I think everybody in this cast finds a lot of joy in the role that they're playing and the group we're playing with. So that is... It really is fun. It really is truly fun every night. And last night even, last night, last night something happened that had never happened. And it was another great reminder in the, in the, the, uh, the couch scene. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we got an extra, there was an a added was laugh. An extra wave of laughter. An extra, which I was we like, we were literally I literally, on stage, no and it was just whatsoever. a great reminder of the audience is like, there saying, yeah. we're still here and we're gonna keep surprising you and don't think that you've got anything figured out, which, mm -hmm. you know, we don't. Uh, but it was that was yeah. beautiful. Like yeah, and there was what also a great a moment last night when Santino was on a couch and it pulls back and the set's supposed to oh, close right, so that too. he can run up and make an entrance and the set never closed. So <laughs> we're sitting <laughs> yeah. there watching him like what's he gonna do? He just gets up just behind the off. action that's going yeah. from and starts walking off. <laughs> and yeah. we're running off for a quick right change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. The quick yeah. changes are insane. Insane guys, it's really like he goes off. I we what remember that he the yeah. the trap didn't work one day that he goes under the stage to do this huge change, and so Barry, one of the ensemble members, gr just grabbed Santino mid song yeah, yeah. and pulled him off. And Lily, we were in the wings. Lily and Andy are in the wings, and Lily's like, watching. the trap's not working. Watch this. Watch the change. Oh my god. Yeah, we were backstage. <laughs> we were in the wing, and we were watching. We were just like. Yeah, <laughs> there, there were like eight people that just jumped on him. And like, like I always say this, but it really is like in Jurassic Park when the raptors eat that guy. It's like that's what happens. It happens so quickly, and then and then a diva emerges. Yeah, and he, that was and that yes. And he just walked on stage, and, like, and then turned. turned and it we is a weird. Cheered in the yeah. wings. So the thing didn't work. I mean, there are things that go wrong all the time like that, but not all the time. But sometimes, every sometimes things go wrong. Not all the time. Every but, performance report, there's the something like, the da, 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 didn't work, we're working on that, like yeah. every single day. So he grabs me, he throws me off. The, the screwed up thing is, then I talked about it later to my wife, I was like, the weird thing is, I didn't react as like, oh no, something's not working. I literally, he pulled me up, I just went and I just started taking my clothes yeah. off. <laughs> like, cause I knew we would figure out like, oh, okay, we're just gonna change here, gonna do this. <laughs> and then I literally like got all this stuff, didn't talk to anybody, and I was like, um, and I just turned out and I walked, and I copied, um, <laughs> there was, this is so dorky, but um, my wife also watches uh, RuPaul's Drag Race a lot, and I'm a big fan of Nina West. And there was a pose that I literally just did a pose of yeah. Nina West. Like I just like, <laughs> I just walked out and I just went. 
I'm like, what am I, who am I becoming? And then I just got back into the scene and then we didn't even talk about it. We should, it's so weird. We should put a GoPro on someone. I and do just, think we should. And just have a monitor in the audience, like so that they can see it. Well, they have talked about filming those quick Let's, We gotta do that, I, yeah. But it's, I've seen it and it gives me so much, it's my fault. I don't want, I'm afraid of, I look at it and I get nervous. I, get, I don't like it. And I feel like over time, I'm not gonna like seeing it. So I would love a GoPro version. I'll buy a GoPro and I'll, I'll, I'll shoot it. But no, you don't wanna, see, it's, it's violent. It, yes, yeah. That's exciting. Bloody, it's bloody. Exciting. And it's not attractive. <laughs> not that that's the reason. It's just not a good look. I look like a monster. Like it's weird. I can't explain it. <laughs> you just stand there. No, well, I don't just stand there. <laughs> <laughs> it's really uncomfortable. It's bizarre. It looks bizarre. <laughs> cool, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll wrap up here and we'll get to the final performance. I, I had like all these credits that I wanted to, to talk about everybody. Uh, like, they can Google us. They, they can. <laughs> you should have said, said Bing it, you missed the opportunity. When I go to do the Bing talks, well, I'll use Google there. So. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I mean, Sentino, of course, voice of Hans and Frozen. Um, you were on Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, uh, yeah. Yeah. Cinderella, uh, the 2013 revival, Impossible Monsters, you have a movie coming out. Yeah, yeah, an independent film. It, I think there's a, uh, it's at a, the, the, it's a film festival, it's at a film festival, oh my God, I can't talk. It's at a film festival on Thursday here in the city. Yes, yes. yes. I, Andy, I will skip over this. I, you, mowing lawns was your first rehearsal time. What? For, you used to listen to, you used to mow lawns listening to your Broadway soundtracks? Oh yes, that's true. Yeah. Is that his credit? Did you put this in your bio? <laughs> yeah. This is. I dug deep. Uh, I dug deep, man. Was that oh, on your Google, resume? Isn't it? Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> yes, but uh, that was, I, I, I would sing. Yes. Uh, I, I would sing. Uh, uh, you do you hear the people sing? You know, Lay um, Yeah, and Master of the House and all those things. Yeah. That's a good part for you. <laughs> And he's all, you studied clowning, which I am impressed with. He is very yes, I, yes, I've studied clowning. Buffon style specifically. Yeah, Buffon, yes. He's a legit clown. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, Lily, of course, uh, originated the role of Martha in Spring Awakening. The first one. The original the one. <laughs> when you were 16, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, of course, Sandy Cheeks and SpongeBob. You've done lots of TV film. The Code Indoor Boys with your friend Wesley, also from SpongeBob. Wesley Taylor, The Post, Elementary, Bull on TV. Sarah, of course, you're on Billions and Get Shorty. Um, Scott, you've been nominated for Best Director nine times. Wow. Yes. And how many wins? Let's take a moment now. Nine times. Nine times. Yes, Robert. Nine lost it. <laughs> uh, that Tony Award nominations, I will put that out there. Yeah, Robert, um, of course, you won the Tony for this year for book writing. You've done a lot of TV film work. First writing producing gig was on Designing Women, which uh, shows his age. Um, Ooh. That was, I was supposed to say that. Shady. <laughs> Shady we Google were, talk. We were, Shady. <laughs> we, were, uh, we were giving Google each shade. other age, age jabs backstage. Yeah, so that is it. Um, <laughs> I'm out of stuff to talk about. <laughs> I've, I've done very little. But You've done very I've little. Already talked about the only Carmen one that San counts Diego, is the Carmen San Diego thing. <laughs> she got an it, Emmy, blah, 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 blah. He won, he won the Tony for Band's Visit, of course. Um, you've also done Full Monty, Dirty Run. I also won a Grammy for Band's Visit. Oh, did you really? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Um, and you're also. I also want an OB for band visit. <laughs> New York and, drama, yes. Okay. New York drama okay. Uh, okay. And you're currently working on two drama desks, yes. <laughs> Lyrics and music. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and you're working on national right Red now. Moon? Yeah. Uh, the Princess Bride for Disney. Yes. Um, it's going pretty well, I think. <laughs> and a bunch of other stuff. Cool. All right. Well, everybody, um, we're going to get into one final performance here from Lily. Yeah. With the choreography, yeah, Lily, we want the full choreo. Do you want to say what it is? <laughs> I think Scott wants to say what it is. No, Julie Nichols goes to a piano bar on her nights off and she sings these songs. That's all you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm videoing you from behind, just so you know. <laughs> I woke up this morning out of my brain An unfamiliar feeling like I'm gonna go insane 
screaming like a banshee, barking like a dog. Like black is white, like day is night, like I'm walking in a total fog. And I'm feeling like a fool, someone's changing all the rules. Bats in the attic, fire in the hole. I can't breathe, I can't sleep, I can't think. Baby, I'm gone, gone, gone. Bees in the bonnet, I'm gonna lose control. If they're mine, brains on vacation, heart is working overtime, beating like a demon, and I can't make it stop. My mind is bruised, I'm so confused, waiting for the other shoe to drop. crazy in a five pound sack if six were nine that's how i feel three fries short of a happy meal i'm back i'm broke i'm dippy i'm dope i'm fried i'm freaked i'm mad in the attic fire in the hole baby lost her Tootsie Musical on Instagram and Twitter. Again, one more big round of applause.